February 2014, Livingston, Montana. An open letter to Gary Steingart. Hi, Gary. It's Walter, Walter Kern, your old friend from New York City. Uh, we used to eat uh, calf brains together. Uh, we'd be sea slugs. Uh, that's when we were both bohemians before I moved out west to be alone and you uh, made friends with James Franco and his crowd. Anyway, I have a issue with you, a pretty big problem, and I'd like to talk about it. I tried to Skype you, but you didn't pick up, you know, ever since you met Franco, you don't pick up much. But it has to do with my own new book, memoir. It's called Blood Will Out. You blurbed it. You blurbed it because you, you blurb everything. You think it's funny. And uh, it kind of is. But I was on the phone today, pretty excited about this book of mine, when my publisher gave me some pretty scary news. There's some things I'm going to have to do to promote my book that make me queasy. Twitter. Now, Twitter, I don't mind at all. Uh, you pop an Ambien, lay down on the couch, say whatever shit comes into your head. Facebook, I'm very comfortable with Facebook. You know, you wait till your kid gets chicken pox or something, you put a picture of them on there, mm, appeal to the general public for health advice, and pretty soon you're very popular. But there's a new wrinkle in this promotion game, and it's one that you're responsible for. They want me to make a trailer for my book, a video, a video for literature. Now, it wasn't enough that in the 1980s, MTV went and ruined rock and roll by making every group that's worth a damn, you know, have to dress up and look good, and if they couldn't, well, they never got a hit again. And it wasn't enough that chefs and restaurants used to just serve food, you know, without the cameras. No, they had to all be on TV and make characters of their people. And it's been good, actually. In that case, it's been good. I think the food is better, and the chefs are pretty funny people, so no problem. But I became a writer, you should know, because I really don't like going out in public. Uh, I'm not a visual person. Uh, I just don't look good. And I thought there was a job for me growing up, and that was novelist. But then, a couple months ago, or maybe it was a couple years ago, because I don't keep up with these things, you know, I'm kind of like friends and I stay away from tech. Uh, you made a little film with Mr. Franco in which you both pretended to be lovers, dressed in bathrobes, sitting at the table, doing this sort of fey bickering comedy about a memoir you'd written, this little failure thing. Or maybe that just came out last month. That's right. And this film of yours, it really, well, caught on. It went viral, however things go viral. And that means now that all your former colleagues have to kind of do a similar thing. The problem is that content's not the point. Uh, these book trailers have to use a real celebrity. Um, someone like your friend Franco and his friends. And that's not fair to people in the outlands. It's not fair to people 
who, you know, like me, had some celebrity friends, but kind of lost them. I mean, I knew George Clooney once. Uh, he made a film of a book called Up in the Air. Uh, we hung out on the set. He tried to bed my girlfriend, you know, which was very nice of him. And flattering. But we fell out of touch and that was that. And then again, I also know Val Kilmer, but Val is famously very hard to work with and frankly, he doesn't like me anymore. Um, who else? Uh, there's Michael Keaton. He lives out near here. Uh, he's very private. Uh, he wouldn't do a video. So that leaves me alone right here, not doing so well, unkempt, I'm smoking, tired, and all I can think of as I go through my Rolodex is that the kind of people that I love, the kind of people that I hang around with, aren't going to get me anywhere in bookland. You see, they used to call it bookland. They didn't used to call it TV land. That was you who made it that. You know, I grew up in this country, unlike you. You grew up in Russia, right? Your shtick. We had a very solid separation between the culture of mm, highbrow thought and literature and, you know, all the other stuff, the I Love Lucy stuff. And we liked it that way because people who were thoughtful didn't have to answer to the values of people who think that, uh, you know, what you wear and what you drive and what kind of house you live in are the consummate values of human life. And it went along like that in this, my country, for decades and decades. And it was really nice. Uh, you know, in college, you hung out with the real black clothing types, the existentialists, the artists. You shit on Hollywood. You really felt good. And even if you became an unknown poet, inside your group, you were golden. You were loved. Meanwhile, out, you know, in Hollywood, uh, they all knew each other too. Uh, but they were stupid, and they knew they were, and we wouldn't talk to them, and they kind of felt bad. They didn't admit it, they never really said it, but People like, I don't know, David Cassidy, um, the guy who played the father on Brady Bunch, they all kind of felt bad because they weren't exalted. They were the show people, the freaks, the circus. They weren't, as it were, Joseph Heller or Norman Mailer or any of the other kind of thinking people who really moved the culture and sort of didn't. Anyway, that's a lecture that's beyond you. Uh, uh, that's about a system you don't care about. Because what's happened, and it's happened rather quickly, is that even guys like me, who spend whole years sitting alone in rooms, all full of smoke, uh, you know, losing their sex drive, uh, 
getting bladder cancer, all so they can create a work of literature. Uh, where was I going? Man, am I so mad. I'm just pissed. I mean, you should have called me. You should have said, listen, I'm thinking of changing everything. I'm thinking of turning this uh, lit game upside down. I got this friend who's been in some dumb movies, pot movies, mostly movies about dope. And he thinks because he's got an MFA and somebody is going to uh, publish his short stories, uh, he can bridge the gap. He can cross over. And I'm going to use him to cross over to that world. I'm going to use him to be a star. You should have called me and said, I'm going to do that. Because I would have warned you not to try. I wouldn't have said it's because you'll fail. You haven't. I would have said it's because I'll have to fail if I have to follow you, and I know I will. Anyway, this is a problem, but I can live with it. This morning, I went to my phone book, you know, for celebrities. Uh, the only one whose number still seems to function, and he is a big one, is Mr. Robert Downey. I think I can get him. I think he wants the cred. Uh, I also think he's a brilliant improvisationist. I think that when we make our trailer, the video for Bud Will Out that you have obliged me to produce, it's probably going to kick that Franco's ass in ways that you are never going to touch. So I'll take Downey. You keep all those fops. fops. And uh, in the end, we'll see who's still left standing. Uh, I have a feeling it won't be either of us. I have a feeling it's going to be a woman. A woman who knows, let's say, well, Ryan Gosling, who can get him to take his shirt off, uh, get in bed, lay the book on his chest, and then they'll talk. That's going to work. That's going to be tremendous. And you and I will not have jobs. <laughs>